What would happen if we studied what is right with people? This is the simple question that Don Clifton based his entire research program on when he was studying human success. And in many ways, this question leads ultimately to the classification of strengths and really is um, the foundation of positive psychology. Again, as we talked about um, in the What is Positive Psychology lecture, um, studying what is right with people or studying what um, excellence is by looking at excellent people um, is a humanist tradition. Uh, it's part of what Maslow said. If you want to know um, excellence, then you have to uh, watch what excellent people are doing. And this is compared to uh, concerns with illness and classification systems for mental illness like the International Classification of Disease, uh, the ICD by the World Health Organization and the DSM uh, by the uh, American Psychiatric Association. Um, if you just look at this sort of uh, rewriting the um, psychiatrics Bible, you can see that um, uh, what you're really seeing is a redefining of illness, uh, moving, um, hoarding in, taking Asperger's out. And really this is um, what uh, the classification of strengths was trying to uh, further or trying to um, uh, add to, again, not to replace or not to say that um, concern with illness is not important. Um, but when you're looking at strengths, um, really to try and think about encouraging a strength-based approach to diagnostics uh, and treatment. And this is really why um, the concerns with strengths is really um, the antithesis of the dsm 4 because uh, while traditionally uh, psychology was really focused on uh, treatment and diagnosis of mental illness, um, really arguing that this would be a, a value-free um, profession, not to, um, not to say that certain people should uh, possess certain types of strengths, but to sort of eliminate, um, a, um, uh, eliminate illness in a certain way that would allow people um, to have a, a functional life um, strengths basically said if you're going to um, really have a diagnostic and treatment program that is going to be most effective, um, you really need to have um, not just a concern with illness, but also a concern with strengths, and really encouraging strengths as a way uh, of improving uh, treatment. And that thought process, uh, coupled with sort of uh, positive psychology, reawakened this focus on the area of good character or virtues. And as we mentioned again in the first lecture, again, this was not the first time that historically psychology had thought about virtue or good characters, uh, but it um, really was a reawakening or a, a understanding of psychology's sort of uh, original focus. Um, the major reason that positive psychologists are actually interested in measuring strengths is that um, as you look at these different sort of strengths here in this word cloud over here, um, that by exercising or um, actually using our character strengths, we can achieve sort of the good life. Um, for those people who are really creative, uh, if that is one of their strengths, by uh, acting in creative ways throughout the day, whether that be um, in their leisure or being in their in their job, um, that that is going to be the best way that they can experience uh, ultimate well-being and and, uh, and the good life. Uh, some individuals might be higher on curiosity, uh, and again, uh, whether that be in your leisure time or in your social relationships or in in your work. Um, Using that strength of curiosity um, is really how you can achieve the good life. Uh, and so part of what we'll see today is that um, one of the sort of two major themes in the, in, uh, throughout the, the lecture um, is that uh, these strengths are, are relatively universal. We'll see that these strengths actually appear throughout many cultures uh, and many situations. Um, and uh, as well as uh, that there are going to be large individual differences, that there will be uh, some individuals that will uh, see some of these strengths as being more uh, true to who they are, and other individuals will see different types of strengths. But everyone has strengths, um, and it's really the, the use of the strengths in your day-to-day -day life um, that will lead to the good life. Um, and so what you'll see is that the character strengths has really taken off in, in three very sort of diverse areas. Um, this uh, renewed emphasis on the positive aspects uh, has led to uh, lots of different research and strengths. And so most of what we'll look at today are our character strengths, um, 
by Chris Peterson and Martin Seligman. Uh, they're really sort of the, the uh, individuals who have really focused on this. It's, it's the major focus in positive psychology. The VIA uh, is the uh, tool that we'll talk a lot about today. And one of the reasons I really um, like the VIA classification system is that one of the basic questions that started um, the development of the VIA uh, is to look at the characteristics of people who were self-actualizing and then help average people become more likely to self-actualize. And I think that, again, this is a, a major concept in positive psychology, that if you want to know um, what people are doing when they're doing something right, if you want to know uh, what is excellent, if you want to know how to self-actualize, um, then what you have to do is actually study people who are excellent. You have to actually study people who are self-actualizing. Um, and then sort of ask how we can get everyone to a point uh, of experiencing self-actualization or excellence. Uh, Don Clifton really took strengths into the occupational setting. Um, Clifton being uh, a major part uh, of the Gallup organization and therefore uh, strengths and strength-based research uh, in, in the workplace, uh, a major focus within um, the Clifton organization. Uh, and then we'll actually see some, some applications of strengths in sort of uh, work and daily life uh, by Lindley and, and his colleagues um, and really looking at particularly using strengths as opposed to sort of possessing strengths. And we'll, we'll talk about that in the second half um, of, the, uh, of the lecture. So I love this uh, slide. It actually comes from one of the Gallup um, uh, uh, websites, and it really gives us sort of three different uh, aspects of, of what strengths are. Uh, so we start off with our talents, uh, and our talent is sort of a, a naturally reoccurring pattern of thought or feeling or, or behavior um, that can be really utilized in different types of life experiences. Um, and that talent is something that we're born with. It's something that uh, might be, you know, socialized within us. Again, sort of that, you know, nature nurture question that we're always stuck with. Um, but it's something that that we possess. Um, but it won't actually. A talent is very different from a strength because a talent is just sort of this natural way of thinking or feeling or behaving. But there has to be some amount of investment in practicing. Uh, to develop your skills if you're really going to want to to build a strength. So um, there are numerous types of studies out there that talk about um, individuals who have, who have really achieved like the highest levels of abilities within their fields, whether they be um, in the corporate field or in, in nonprofits or uh, in academics or in um, education or in athletics, that they, this, this idea that there has to be, you know, really 10,000 or, or thousands of hours of time spent practicing to develop your talent so that it ultimately would become a strength. And Don Clifton really saw that a strength was really just an extension of your talent, right? That once you have invested enough time into your talents, practicing your talents, developing your skills, building sort of this base, then that's only when it will become a strength. And so in this case, a strength is different from a talent because while a strength is sort of a naturally reoccurring thought pattern. Um, a strength is really more of this, this capacity that you have um, to consistently perform a near perfect uh, per performance, uh, uh, be really nearly perfect in what you're doing. So this, this capacity for thinking and feeling and behaving that really allows for optimal functioning, um, really areas that are important and, and value to you. That's really the sort of difference between the strength uh, and a, a talent. So one of the things that Clifton uh, talked about was that strengths are really the sort of naturally reoccurring uh, thought pattern of feeling or behavior, um, but that, that they're really the sort of authentic aspect of your personhood, that it's really this sort of aspect of who you really truly are, that that's really what makes up a strength. And so when we think about what strengths are, this sort of capacity for feeling and thinking and behaving, that sort of allows this optimal functioning, one of the things that I think is important is to sort of look at this slide right here, that you can actually know what a strength is because of the sort of way it feels, that you feel very authentic uh, when you're using your strengths, that you'll feel this sort of, um, this sort of inevitability uh, in using your strengths, that, that, you, that you almost have to use your strengths um, in certain types of situations, and that strengths are really invigorating and that they're not exhausting, that they come with sort of intrinsic motivation and not extrinsic motivation. So in the second half of the lecture, we'll talk really a little bit more about how you can understand what a strength is um, and uh, how to use those strengths.